So, uh, my name's Matt. I'm a manager, solutions architect for ABJ. I'm, I'm one half of Chef Australia. Uh, I moved to Sydney about uh, eight months ago, and I've uh, been a chef for about six and a half years. So that, that's why I am, if you want to get a hold of me afterwards. Uh, so, how many of you run CICD? Yeah? You have some sort of development pipeline where you know, code moves from development to QA to stage, staging to production. Uh, you know, and if you're using it with Chef, hopefully uh, you've got something like, you know, you're building and testing locally with Test Kitchen or Vagrant. Uh, you're pushing things into your CI CD for building and testing. And then when something breaks, you push a patch through the same system again uh, to remediate it. Um, but how many of you have compliance people, right? You have compliance regimes you have to deal with, auditors, PCI, touch money, healthcare. Please raise your hand if you touch money. <laughs> um, so, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you're coding along and things are going great, the, the auditors show up and they say, stop. Stop what you're doing. Uh, we need to make sure that you're not running Tell me. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, you're actually running your infrastructure the way we said you would. Um, not that they particularly know why they're making these rules, but they have a list of rules for what you're supposed to do, right? Um, they're auditors. They're not, they're not you know, security specialists. They're, they're, they're there to make sure that uh, for some definition of compliance, you're adhering to it. So they stop what you're doing. And they have this big folder of paper, um, just reams of rules. Um, again, they're not sure why, but uh, you know, port uh, 23 needs to be turned off. Um, maybe maybe they moved on to PDFs. But you know, you start to look at this, and you're like, okay, I got this, I can do this. Let's open it, page one. And that says uh, SSH controls. We need to make sure that uh, you're using SSH v2. You know, that's, that's been around for about 20 years. It's, that's pretty good. Um, you're like, okay, I got this. Um, how will I verify this? You know, uh, I know grep. I can check to make sure that uh, this is actually what I'm running in production. We got uh, SSH v2 and our SSHD config. I got that. That's good. Um, and then they say, well, we also have these rules for Apache. Uh, we want to make sure that you're not exposing uh, directories, you know, because someone might know that you're running Red Hat 6.1 and figure out that they can hit you with a different export. You know, that's a fairly reasonable request. And so they got this big write-up about why and uh, how to remediate it. Here we got some server tokens, uh, product only. So you're like, all right, I can do that. I'll grab it again. Uh, that, that, that works too. Um, found what I was looking for. And then they hit you up with the sys benchmarks. And they're like, we have 573 rules about what it means to have a Red Hat 7.3 compliant machine. And you're like, that's a lot of crap. Um, <laughs> luckily, uh, you know, you, you got a lot of uh, endurance and, and maybe you really like crap. No, uh, but probably fun. not, probably not. Sorry. Um, so when you start to think about compliance and, and auditing, you go from having this nice dead QA to stage Reduction, uh, you know, where you have a security review. You have these guys who are like, okay, um, we're going to make sure that uh, the things that you're doing are actually compliant. And, uh, you know, we're doing DevSecOps, so this is going to be fast, right? But realistically, these guys become the roadblock of what you're doing. They become the gating function for releasing code to production. Um, they're the ones who are saying, you know, stop. We're going to watch these patches, and in two weeks or so, we'll be done. And we call that CI CD. Um, but real, so you know, they become this wall to, to production, to, to pushing things out, and and so eventually you start to say, well, maybe we get some sort of scanning solution in there that's you know running for uh, you know checking for for audits, and again that that usually works pretty well, but uh, you know everybody knows that they're supposed to be running in a in a more uh, compliant fashion, but two thirds of the organizations that came out of this uh, Verizon compliance report said that they didn't even check. You know, they didn't check everything. They knew they had holes. Um, and, you know, it's not like it's slowing down. You know, it's not like, well, maybe in 2017 we're going to have less, less infrastructure to manage. You know, we're going serverless, yes, that's, that's good. Um, but even that has to be checked. Uh, and so the key trends are things are getting more complex. You're getting more and more stuff that you have to manage. And uh, no one's really keeping up particularly well. And I'll make these available later if you want to you know, read those orders. Uh, docs. So now you've got your compliance officer, and he's like, okay, we're working on this doc. 
Uh, we've been aggregating our grub scripts because this, this is how we're gonna how we're gonna roll. And anybody who talks to you know your DevOps engineers or your dev or your ops or you know SREs or whatever you call them, and they're like, we're we're doing stuff with Chef. Uh, we've got this infrastructure code, and this is how we think about our infrastructure. Um, we don't particularly think in terms of grep um, or sed or awk or you know, any of those great tools, um, but this is how we roll our infrastructure. And, and so now you've kind of got this communications problem. You've got your, your, your DevOps guys working in Ruby, your security guys working in grep, and your compliance guys working in Excel, um, you know, because they're working the, the checklist. Uh, <laughs> So stop. You know, let, let's let's step back from the problem. Um, risk management theater. So there's a lot of a lot of efforts of going out there to make things look secure that aren't actually secure. Compliance is kind of one of those things where you know your auditors show up and they say we're going to make sure that you're compliant, and then they fill out you know out of those 573 rules that they want for compliance, they give you exemptions for 170 because you're like you know what we're done we're tired uh, we got to go home. We'll be back in three months to write up the same report again. Um, so compliance sits on top of security. Compliance is not, you know, it's not finding zero-day exploits. It's knowing that there are things out there that you should be guarding for. You know, knowing that you shouldn't be running SSH v1 or Telnet uh, or you know any any or you know, certain versions of OpenSSL. Everybody knows these are problems. It's not like it's a zero-day exploit that you know you shouldn't be running Red Hat 6.1. Um, so compliance sits on top of security, uh, and, and we see these as complementary functions. Um, and so the compliance challenge is, can you prove who has access to systems? Uh, do you have processes and workflows that uh, can be verified? Um, you know, what does your technical debt look like, and can this all be audited? And so we feel like the solution to this is the same thing that we do for infrastructure. Uh, it's code. Um, just as we've done with, with Chef, we don't think humans should be on boxes. And one of the things I tell people is that uh, humans logged into boxes is an anti pattern. You know, people should be using their phones, uh, maybe mobile devices, uh, laptops. Um, but you know, logging in and setting up you know sixty thousand servers not really a great uh, use of your time. Um, so we do that with code, and we have this this saying you know idea in, in DevOps that you know the tools do not make. The process, you know, just because you're using a tool like Chef or Puppet or Ansible, that does not mean you're doing DevOps. You can do DevOps with Perl and Bash and you know batch files if, if that's how you roll in CBS. But some tools work better for the workflow. Some tools lend themselves to certain patterns. And for automation, you want to have a tool that all your teams can work with together. So the idea that we have is that compliance, DevOps, and security should all be working on the same platform. We call this Inspect. Uh, so Inspect is an open source project from Chef, uh, but it is not Chef. So they're completely separate code bases, not related to, to each other. Uh, we actually we bought a German consulting company that was doing uh, auditing compliance for a large German telco, uh, and they had an open source project called Hardening.io. So if you've heard of that, this is kind of the evolution of that project where um, you know, they had these compliance regimes. They wanted to make sure that they could deploy things uh, to match them. So the compliance language looks like this. Uh, it's meant to be very high level. This is, this is not, again, not Chef. It's a different language. It's a DSL meant to be something that your auditors, maybe a junior sysadmin could write, um, where you have a control. You know, you have a control with a, a, an identifier. You have an impact. What is the weight of this? You know, how, how important is this? Is this critical? Is this trivial? Um, you know, there's a, a sys benchmark control for slash temp should be on its own partition. You know, that's cool. I get it. Uh, it's not critical to me. Um, so, you know, the impact for that might be 0.1. You have a title. This is something that, you know, when you read it, makes sense. Maybe a long form description to go with it. And then a little bit of code uh, that goes with it. There are, there are a lot of resources built in. We'll, we'll see some of the examples of that, but it's it's meant to be very high level. Its protocol should equal to, you know, this is human readable. Uh, again, a lot of stuff built in. Junior sysadmin can write this. Uh, it's one language for Linux, for Windows. Uh, here's an example of a Windows control. You know, we're looking for strong Windows NTLM v2 authentication enabled. Uh, so we're actually peeking into the registry to make sure that that key exists. You know, that's it's pretty handy if, uh, if you're managing a lot of Windows infrastructure. 
Solaris, AIX, uh, HPUX. Uh, that's the dot, 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 it's HPUX. Um, uh, there's a lot of resources built in and more being added all the time. So InSpec is Apache license. That means you can take the code base and do whatever you want with it. You can build an auditing company on top of it. If you are an auditor, say a PwC, an Accenture, or Deloitte, you can take this and add this to your repertoire of tools. They have. Um, it, it has a lot of primitives built in for things like you know, kernel modules, IP tables, packages, verifying that things are on the system and not on the system. Uh, there's also controls built in for, for other things. Uh, it is not intrusion detection. You know, this is not tripwire. This is not saying, oh, I see you've made some change. This is saying, somebody set the permissions on this file to 777. Yeah, I don't know who did it. I can't tell you when it happened, but I see that that's, that's not wrong. It's not a firewall. It doesn't keep anybody out, keep anybody in. It just says, I see you set some standards for how firewall should be set up. That's not how it's set up. You know, it's uh, definitely not an antivirus, and it's not a pen testing tool, except the fact that it shows you that, oh, tell them it's running. You know, that's, that's a pen test right there. Um, works with bare metal systems, VMs, containers, uh, nodes, uh, you know, your, your uh, grub for your uh, OS bootstrapping, databases. So it can actually connect to MySQL Postgres databases right now. We're working on SQL Server, uh, Oracle's on the roadmap. Uh, to actually connect to, to it, make sure that the default users are not provided on the system. You know that's fairly useful. You know you don't want uh, you don't want them to be shipping with you know, the defaults turned on. Um, so it can actually connect into a database, poke around if there's something you want to look for. Uh, works with APIs, so it can actually talk to API endpoints. Say, hey, I want to check the security groups for my AWS setup and make sure that these uh, inbound rules are, are set up or these egress rules are not turned on. Uh, we're working with Amazon to provide um, <clears throat> compliance profiles around AWS. Uh, we have a local partner, uh, Vibrato, who's been doing a lot of work on the Azure platform. Um, there's lots of open source stuff available as well. Um, Incident works without an agent. It is agentless, it can work locally. Uh, so we say, you know, inspect exec script, you know, a, a control. Uh, you can test remotely via SSH, you know, using a, a key or a password. You uh, can connect to Windows machines via WinRM, uh, as well as to Docker containers through the Docker host, scan the containers that are running there to see that things are running according to the rules that you've set up. Uh, right now, uh, operating system coverage is pretty good. Um, there's not much that isn't covered yet, uh, but stuff is getting added all the time. Uh, and so the workflow that we want to get into is you scan for compliance, you find out what's broken, you see, hey, uh, we're supposed to be PCI compliant. What happens when I scan our 1,200 servers? Oh crap, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, let's go and test those patches locally, push those into CI, CD, and keep remediating things till our compliance turns green, you know, until everything gets fixed. And so the workflow is, you know, this continuous feedback loop of detecting the issues with that spec correcting them with chef. You want to keep your configuration management and your compliance auditing separate separate tools. It should be separate tools because you don't want, you know, you don't want to grade your own home, essentially. You know, if you're setting up the server, you're gonna be like, nailed it first try, you know? Um, because chances are good, you know, maybe you didn't know that SSL v2, uh, or SS, you know, open SSL v3 is a deprecated uh, protocol, you know, or that uh, you know, MD4 is the wrong crypto, uh, to use with, with OpenSSL. And it's part of a larger InfoSec tool chain. You know, you build it in with your firewalls, your IDS systems, your antivirus, your pen testing. You know, this is meant to be part of your, 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 uh, you know, your kit that you use. Build it into your CICD. Uh, again, inspect completely open source, Apache licensed. Uh, it's actually a quite popular project. Uh, Black Duck gave it the security tool of the year for 2015. It came out in November 2015, so I guess that was slim pickets. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, if you're using Chef, we have an audit cookbook. You can build this into your CI/CD. You know, when you go and deploy something, you can actually fail the, the config if it doesn't pass its tests anymore. Um, there's also support for Puppet for Ansible uh, if you want to, to use those tools as well. Um, if you're using Chef's test kitchen, you know, for actually standing up ephemeral infrastructure. Make it part of the testing 
testing uh, life cycle. You know, say, you know, kitchen verify. Run those inspect tests before you commit that code. Verify that things are, are, are being uh, fixed. Uh, there's also on our community site supermarket, right now I think there's about 30 compliance profiles that are being shared by people. Um, you know, every time a new CVE comes out, people have started publishing CVE scans. You know, so there's you know, not every single one of them, but if it hits like OpenSSL or Apache or Nginx or you know, things that are fairly popular, it's easy to write up a one-liner and add it to the, to the supermarket so people can go and grab it. Um, if you're using our commercial product, uh, we ship all the sys benchmarks with it. We're not allowed to open source these, uh, but we're allowed to ship them. It's, you know, open source licensing is fun, um, but I can tell you how to do it. Sys benchmarks guys provide XML documents to back the PDFs that they ship. It's an XSLT, turn XML into a uh, high level DSL. It's not that hard. Um, also, if you're using SCAP, uh, Microsoft's uh, SCAP profiles, those can be reused as well. Um, and so, you know, we, we use, you know, the, the, the commercial here is, you know, Chef Automate is our commercial product, and Spec is part of that. You know, we provide a UI around it, as well as shipping a lot of compliance profiles. So you can do those scans and get a nice dashboard. But again, Inspec, completely open source. Um, one more shout out, ChefCom, coming up in May. Uh, early bird registration ends in three days, and uh, you get free, uh, Three certifications, including no around compliance. So that's uh, that's that. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Um, so, so the, the question was, uh, I don't want this group of servers to talk to that group of servers. Um, you could do things like check firewall rules, or um, you know, if they're actually firewalled off, uh, you could. I don't know if there's an availability, like you can actually, because the, the way it works is that SSH is into a machine, runs the checks, and you know, reports back. So maybe there's an SSH in and ping across and just see. Um, it's it's you know, it's a high level DSL, but it's easy to extend. And so people are writing like new extensions to do you know, if that sort of scanning, it wouldn't be that hard to write a new one you know, if, if it doesn't already support it. Um, so question over here. So how would you do the compliance testing if you didn't want to run SSH? If you didn't want to run SSH, uh, you can run it locally. Um, so if um, InSpec is included in the Chef development kit, so if you had you know, machines that already had Chef on them, um, you could just run inspect locally and have you know, have those profiles run and then send the reports somewhere. Uh, the reports could be exported. Right now, I think as you know, as as you know, raw text, JSON or YAML, I think are the current choices. But you could probably like send it to Logstash or something like that and send it to another system if you want that. It also gets aggregated to the Chef Automate platform, so you know if you want it there. Um, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be done remotely. It can run locally. Is that how the container one works? So the container one, uh, yeah, it connects to the Docker host, and you say, yeah. yeah so inspect exec t Docker, and then the the address of the container you want, the particular running container you want to scan. Does that make compliance code easy to start with? Uh, no, no. So the compliance code. Um, you know how with, with Docker you can actually run commands against the containers? That's what it's doing. It's actually looking at the, the container that's running, not in it. I know that's you know semantics, but there's not an agent inside your container. You're just running commands against that running container. You know, like like when you pass a dash whatever bash to get a shell into it. Yeah, it gets, shell is, that shell is binary. Yeah. So, so I guess you get a container that doesn't have shell. So shell. So it might not be in the same container. Yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. And that's going to have to go. It could be looking at the file system, but it's probably using shell. So uh, we had a blog post last week about this. It might be in there. I'm not positive. So I can see what you, where you're getting at, where you might have like a, a container that doesn't even have BusyBox with a shell, and you're or you want to look at the file system on, on, on disk. Yeah. yeah, I think it uses shell. 
but you know, that, that transport layer is a separate library that could be pulled out and could be changed to other things. So we're starting to look at you know, not only testing cloud platforms, but maybe start talking about like network devices, storage, databases without hopping onto the host and going to the database. Um, it's meant to be very extensive, you know, and, and it's gotten a lot of traction. So uh, code has been contributed from Oracle, from IBM, from HPE, you know, adding support to their platforms. I mentioned, you know, a bunch of large auditing companies are adding it to their, their you know, stock of tools. Because really, like, those audits are kind of tedious and boring. And if you can move beyond that, you can get to the higher value conversations with your customers. And if you're a service provider, that gives you a big portfolio of stuff that you can reuse across your customers as a value. So. Is there a PCI um, module? We do not ship a PCI module. We have kind of a starter kit, but PCI is often at the discretion of like your credit card vendor and your auditor. Like they agree on what compliance looks like for them, and so it's like Accenture decides what your PCI story is. You know, because they talk to Mastercard and Visa and you know whoever else touches your money or you know cares about you know your definition so they kind of do this you know Venn diagram and hand wave and so yeah if you can get that if you can get a hold of that doc you can then automate that and then you can say look we automated these 5,000 servers no humans logged into them everything is compliant and we can do you know we can keep rolling out patches that's the one any questions Okay, well, thank you very much.